Evening all. Well, today was the day of the um, so-called People's Vote March in London, the campaign for a second referendum, which is what it is. You know, the, the tag People's March is just a slick bit of um, propaganda. It's disingenuous because all referenda, all general elections or by elections for that matter, any time the voters go to the ballot box, it's a People's Vote. So to call this one the people's vote is disingenuous, and I'm not going to credit it as such. I will call it for what it is, uh, which is the campaign for a second referendum. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to mock this campaign. I mean, I could. I could take the L to uh, uh, re Remainers and call it the loser's vote. But I'm not doing that, you know, in the spirit of uh, trying to reach a uh, consensus, as it were. But at the same time, the, the whole FBPE Remainer line, I think, is, is extremely damaging. They say us Brexiteers are the harmful ones, but the, what they're doing seems to border on a, a, a mania. It seems to be um, a compulsion, uh, even an addiction to the EU. You know, by, by having the EU taken away, a lot of them are behaving like a, a drug addict that just lashes out. I've got to have my fix, man. I've got to have my stuff. And um, the, the vile um, comments and the bile that gets spouted out on social media in the direction of Brexiteers. Um, Brexiteers, I, I know, very cutting and very sarcastic, um, pithy in a way. You know, they can wound, they can be obnoxious jerks, but it's a different way the um fbp are far more aggressive i think and um hate driven than leavers now from my point of view when i deal with uh, diehard remainers they all think i'm i'm the identikit uh, brexiteer which is that i'm uh, racist, uh, bigoted, uh, small-minded, I'm, I'm less intelligent, I, I, have, I was swayed by a slogan on a bus, all that kind of thing. But that's not the truth. I explained to them that I began the Brexit campaign as a reluctant Remainer. I thought this is a trading block that could be you know, useful and to, to get us out of the EU would involve some hardship, some difficulty, and was I prepared to go along with it? I didn't know. So I, I had some issues with the EU and some concerns, and so I did some research into it, and I found the Five Presidents Report, and I read Guy Verhofstadt's book, and I just listened to what was coming out of the EU, and they were very plain. They want full political and economic union. Yes, there are plans for a single European armed force. Don't tell me there isn't. I have seen the proposal. Oh, you know, I've seen the summary of the proposals. I've seen what Juncker has said on the subject, and um, there has been a vote. 23 European countries have pledged to um, integrate their defence forces. So don't tell me that there isn't a plans for the army, and don't tell me that there is, aren't plans for full political and economic union in the EU, uh, of the EU. And don't tell me that um, Britain will always keep its veto, because these are all things that the EU themselves have said are going to happen. The, the, the veto is going to go. There will be full political union. There will be a unified armed force. But as I said, I'm trying to reach across the aisle to Remainers. I'm not having any luck. I, the position, I, I've done another video on this, but I wanted to update it, um, bearing in mind the events that happened today. You see, the thing is, is that Leave won. So Leave have the mandate, okay, 17.4 million people. And as I say to Remainers, 17.4 million people, that's more than voted to remain in the EU, more voted to leave the EU. There is a disenchantment with the EU. There, People aren't happy with it. People don't like it. And what are you going to do to address that? Will you ever stop and go, a lot of people don't like the EU, and it's not just in the UK, it's starting to spread all across Europe. A lot of people are disenchanted with the EU. So maybe it's time for you and the EU to pause and to think, oops, we, we're perhaps overreaching in our desire for this full political and economic union. Maybe it's time to listen to this large section of people, the majority 
of British voters. Maybe it's time to start listening to their concerns and their upsets and to offer some concessions. Maybe it's time, you know, the, they may love the idea of a single European armed force, but if that's unpopular, we won't do it. Maybe Britain doesn't want to lose its currency. It's got reasons it doesn't want to lose its currency, so we won't force them. Maybe Britain doesn't like the idea of losing its sovereignty and becoming part of a fully politically and economically unified EU superstate. So maybe some of us, some of the countries in the EU, if they want to band together and lose their individual national identity, let them. But there are others like the United Kingdom that don't want to do that. So they can be kind of a, have a different kind of membership of the EU. They can participate in the trading bloc aspects. They don't have to have the political and economic union aspects. See, this is concession, right? Brexiteers leave, have the mandate. Remain does not have the mandate. So if you want to win me over, you cannot abuse me and win me over. You cannot try and instill fear into me and win me over. You cannot tell me I am ill-educated and ill-informed and try and win me over. You have to give something. If you are a Remainer, you have to concede something. You have to give up something in order to win people back. I think a lot of people on the Leave side wouldn't mind being part of a common market. They do not want to be part of a European Union. Okay? So, offer something. Now, they say, oh, but you Brexiteers, you haven't offered any concessions. Well, we have, as a matter of fact, because we have four options for leaving the EU. OK, some of them are what's called the soft Brexit options and some of them are called the hard Brexit options. So we have the No Deal World Trade Organization, which is the hardest of hard Brexits. OK, so that's not a concession. I grant that that's not a concession. But if you have a look at Chequers and the Norway options, those are concessions. That's something that I think voters who voted to leave the Union, a large number of them, would say, OK, it's not our ideal model, but we might go with one of those two. OK, that's a concession. Right, so what are you conceding? If you're a Remainer, what are you prepared to give up? And every single Remainer, every single one, refuses to concede. Instead, they have these marches in London. They act like crazed drug addicts, abusing anybody who disagrees with them. And guess what they sound like? A certain meme going around, a certain grey, blank-faced meme, the NPCs. And it just so happens that events in the news kind of dovetail nicely. And here we have Nick Clegg <laughs> um, agreeing that he's going to go off and work with the big tech companies in Silicon Valley. Yes, our people who control our social media, so here's a man. Here's man, Britain, you know, a kind of a EU file, you know, firmly in the pocket of the EU, and he's going to work with the American tech companies. You know, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong for the freedom of speech and the, and the ability of uh, independent entrepreneurial thinkers on the web to make videos? commenting about all kinds of issues that may go against that of the EU establishment and the um, progressive left in the United States. What could possibly go wrong with that arrangement? But the reason why I bring up Clegg um, is that he can go, by the way, he can go work anywhere he likes. I mean, he can go work at Facebook, Google, wherever it is. But here's the thing. I saw a video of him a few months ago where he, um, I think it was a TED talk, something like that anyway, but there was he on stage with Jonathan Haidt. And Jonathan Haidt was trying to explain to Nick Clegg the, uh, the principle between the somewheres and the anywheres, um, what, why people voted for Brexit um, and voted for Trump, you know, the concept that some people are very attached to their nations, to their cultures, their, their national identity, not in the kind of, aggressive, uh, expansionist nationalist way, but in a kind of civ what's called civic nationalism, the kind of um, pride, patriotism, the fact that they think their country means something to them. It's very personal. And he was trying to explain the concept of the somewheres. And Clegg was just like, 
it just didn't get it. It just sailed over his head or in one ear out the other. And after that, did did everything that Clegg has said on the subject, um, it's like he didn't hear or understand anything Height had said to him at all. And so this is a this is a this is a mania. This is a cult. I think the diehard FBPE Remainers are a cult. And yeah, this is why they're getting the NPC memes. But I I, I think break the thinking. Okay, it's not absolute. You know, it doesn't have to be no deal Brexit, and it doesn't have to be um, blind obedience to the EU. Let's try and let's try and have a discussion. Let's try and reach across the aisle. Try and win me over by conceding something that would make me want to come and vote for you. Don't abuse me. Don't tell me I'm stupid. And don't. Uh, try and fill me with the uh, fears about things that might happen. Okay? If you want my vote to support remaining in the EU, you're going to have to work for it. And that means giving up something. Okay, so think on that. Anyway, until next time, where well, I'll be probably doing my next entry in the most effective people on the anti left, in the comments below. Let's play a guessing game. So you think I've chosen in at uh, number four on my list. But until next time, this is Nick Hughes, wishing you a very good night and a lovely rest of the weekend. Okay, bye.